Recently I uh, picked up a uh, couple of antennas off of eBay for us to take a look at and uh, this is one of them that I'm going to take a look at today and uh, the reason I picked this one up is because it's claimed to be 18 dBi of gain so it's a high gain antenna and with 18 dBi that really is a high gain antenna so I thought it'd be interesting to uh, first of all take a look at this and then uh, discuss uh, you know the differences uh, especially in an omnidirectional antenna the differences in the gain and how they uh, actually go about achieving that so before we uh, take a look at the inside of this just to uh, determine what kind of antenna it really is and you know work out whether it is actually uh, 18 dBi or not I thought we'd give it a test next to uh, an omnidirectional uh, rubber duck uh, dipole antenna this one's an alpha one and this has uh, 5 dB of gain and then just to make it even more interesting I've got a few of uh, these antennas that I've had in the lab for a while I've never taken a closer look at these uh, on uh, you know uh, YouTube before but these are also uh, rated for 18 dbi up there i mean you can find these off sellers they some sellers list them as 16 dbi but uh, these ones that i've purchased here and uh, i've got a few of them uh, these are rated for 18 dbi so i thought we'll put that into the mix as well and give that a test and then after the test i'll explain why a lot of people are disappointed when they get one of these and it doesn't quite live up to their expectations and that's to do with uh, the way it uh, achieves that high gain so let's give it a uh, bit of a test first nothing too glamorous a couple of alpha cards test this one and this one then swap this one out and stick one of these on just so we can you know get an idea of what these uh, antennas can pick up so here we are then as I said nothing too uh, glamorous I've just got them strapped to my uh, camera boom but uh, I'll give them both a scan the 5 dB one is on the left and the uh, 18 dB is on the right and uh, straight away it seems to perform a uh, little bit better than the uh, 5 dB one if we uh, have a look at uh, some of those uh, access points you can see that uh, it is a little bit more And indeed if we take a closer look at those access points now that uh, things have settled down it seems that the uh, 5 dB alpha one is uh, outperforming it slightly if we look at some of the uh, access points that the uh, alpha 5 dB one has picked up like Wi-Fi repeater here uh, that's around 50% and we if we have a look at the 18 dB I one and we can see that's a little bit uh, lower and some of these access points around here have completely dropped off so you know it's uh, supposed to be three times the power of uh, the 5 db one but uh, on this test it doesn't seem to be so second test then this time uh, against one of those white uh, 18 dbi antennas on the left there so let's give them a quick scan give them a minute to load up so there you go then it looks like they've uh, both loaded up the uh, antenna that I just purchased off eBay is uh, looking extremely poor but you can also see the white uh, 18 dBi uh, omnidirectional antenna there and uh, that doesn't perform much better at first glance than the uh, 5 dB one so let's uh, go back to the bench and I'll explain why this is so why did the 5 dBi uh, dipole seem to uh, operate around the same as uh, one of these uh, so-called uh, 18 dBi antennas here and here? And uh, it's a major reason for uh, disappointment, especially if people uh, think, oh, I'll uh, buy one of these as an upgrade to my uh, 5 dBi and, uh, you know, I should get a lot more access points. But uh, it doesn't uh, often work out like that. And it's down to the uh, beam width of the uh, omnidirectional antenna itself and uh, beam width is something that a lot of people don't uh, cover when they're talking about omnidirectional antennas 
So what you've got to understand then, if you've got your uh, wireless uh, router or a uh, you know a uh, USB uh, Wi-Fi card, that will only produce so much power. So let's say it only produces 300 milliwatts of uh, power, then that's all you've got. An antenna is not an amplifier, and that's all we've got to play with. So the antenna needs to make uh, the best use of that 300 milliwatts that it can. So if we uh, take a look at the uh, 5 dB I uh, dipole first, it uh, goes out in a uh, donut, uh, a ring donut shaped uh, sphere of uh, a radiation pattern. That's how you know it uh, radiates out from uh, 360 degrees. But uh, we also have a beam width to that uh, radiation pattern, something like this. So even though it's omnidirectional, it still has a uh, beam width. Now, if we want to go up and say uh, 18 dBi, then uh, we've still only got the same amount of power to play with. But uh, how you get the uh, more gain out of a uh, different design, but uh, you know, still uh, an omnidirectional uh, dipole antenna, is to reduce this beam width so it will travel further. But because you've reduced it and made it much narrower, uh, some of the access points that are closer to that, to that antenna will perform more poorly than the uh, 5 dB one. And that's something you have to take into consideration, let's say, you know, uh, you're uh, setting up a uh, wireless network in a uh, large office environment. Sometimes uh, sticking a higher gain uh, dB uh, antenna in a dead spot doesn't really help you and can, it make, can make things worse because uh, the uh, higher dB one, as I say, has a much narrower beam width and can end up skipping over the top of, say, uh, somebody's laptop on a desk. And, uh, you know, it'd be really good uh, further out, uh, you know, probably in the next office. But, uh, you know, sometimes it can uh, perform a lot poorer. And that's the reason why some people are a little bit disappointed because uh, with the closer access points, you don't see that much difference you know uh, in uh, the access points that you can actually pick up and uh, the signal strength of the closer ones as well tends to be around the same whether you're using an 18 dbi uh, omnidirectional antenna or a 5 dbi you only really see it as you go further out so now that we've got a uh, basic understanding of how these uh, work at the uh, higher gain antennas I just want to uh, show you the packaging here and as you can see with the uh, advert on eBay this uh, antenna was purchased and uh, advertised for 2.4 gigahertz but on the packaging here it's got uh, LTE 4G and 3G written on there it doesn't say anything about 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi hopefully that's showing up on camera so I'm a little bit uh, concerned now that this is not even for uh, Wi-Fi at all and that's possibly why it performed so poorly against my uh, 5 dB and uh, one of these ones here uh, certainly if it's uh, not even for 2.4 gigahertz so let's see if we can get into this antenna then and I've been caught out before with descriptions for 2.4 gigahertz or you know whatever frequency where sellers just buy these on mass they uh, don't really understand what it is they're selling because they'll probably sell you know other things as well like socks and mugs and all sorts of stuff but uh, they'll just buy these from the warehouse just take the word of the person who's selling them and uh, just list them on mass on ebay so i'm trying to get into this and i think it might be glued so it might take some kind of gentle persuasion to get this apart so let me do that off camera so it didn't need any gentle persuasion at all it just needed these two little plastic pins uh, removing there and uh, i'll show you on the uh, camera now exactly what's inside it is a little bit of a disappointment and we get that so all of this antenna is uh, completely useless you could have had it just uh, as long as that uh, all of that is just for show to make it look a little bit more powerful than it is but uh, just looking at that that does not seem like uh, 2.4 gigahertz to me it uh, definitely seems like a, a completely different frequency and uh, it's a similar design to uh, the kind of antennas you get in a uh, laptop uh, you know the 2.4 gigahertz uh, wi-fi antennas in a laptop but just a lot bigger so i don't think 
this is uh, designed to operate at 2.4 gigahertz in fact i'm not even going to bother hooking this up to the spectrum analyzer i think it's uh, clear that it's uh, certainly not 2.4 gigahertz so a little bit disappointing then and you can see why it performed so poorly against the uh, 5 db uh, rubber duck antenna there this is the ground plane this is the main driven element and uh, it's most certainly not designed to work at 2.4 gigahertz a little bit disappointing i have to say so after that little bit of disappointment then let me uh, take one of these apart just to show you how they get that uh, extra gain in the uh, dipole arrangement here so this is the uh, 18 dbi white one now you can see inside here and you've probably seen this design before on uh, past videos of mine i've covered them previously but basically it's a, a hertzian dipole so most of the measurements will be at 25 millimeters you've got the ground here and then this is all the driven element and you've got loading coils in between to bring that uh, capacitance back down and basically what it is is uh, three antennas uh, stacked up on top of each other so you've got one here one here and one here all stacked up on top of each other to give you that gain and uh, as i said previously this will be a lot narrower than say this is the uh, alpha one that i've taken the case off so you can look i mean this will have a much wider beam width than this one but you can see basically the measurements are the same this is the ground here and uh, everything's at 25 millimeters and if we have a look at the top here this is uh, a half wavelength section right at the top of one of these uh, longer range uh, antennas and uh, you can see it's virtually the same but uh, because it's a uh, half uh, half wavelength here it won't be at the usual measurements it'll be the slightly shorter measurement that a hertzian dipole is so a quarter wavelength at uh, you know when you're constructing a hertzian dipole is around 25 millimeters where a quarter wavelength uh, normally would be something like uh, 31.25 for a quarter wavelength so because it's a capacitive design it's shorter but uh, basically you can see um, how they're actually uh, accomplishing that by stacking different antennas on top of each other so a little bit disappointing then and uh, I think even if this was made for uh, 2.4 gigahertz there's no way uh, you know that uh, antenna design here this single PCB strip is going to operate at 18 dBi so yeah if you see one of these stay away from it I do think it's more for the uh, 3G and 4G uh, frequencies than it is for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz. So hopefully you still found the uh, video interesting. Yes, I'm a little bit disappointed with this antenna, but uh, I can't remember how much it cost me now. Uh, probably you noticed when I pulled up the uh, screenshot earlier on, but I think it was only a couple of pounds. But uh, even so, it's certainly, you know, with that design there, even if that design was for 2.4 gigahertz you're not going to get 18 dbi out of uh, that little piece of pcb there so uh, if you did enjoy the video you know please uh, give it a thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one